So guys, yesterday we had a very important event happening and not a lot of people knew about it because it wasn't really advertised. So if you go to the Temple Institute webpage, you will see that yesterday there was a conference on the Red Heifer. And maybe some of you have found out about this conference and saw it, but the problem was that the whole thing was in Hebrew. So even if you follow the link, you wouldn't understand much what the people were saying because everything was in Hebrew. And the conference was very interesting because it gave an update on the situation with the red heifers and even you had an opportunity to see the red heifers that are currently located in Shiloh. And in this episode, I would like to take a moment to summarize the situation of the red heifers. But before I will do that, please remember to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and hit that bell button. This really, really helps me. With that out of the way, let's begin our episode. So, as you heard, the red heifers are now located in Shiloh. Why Shiloh? Well, if you remember the biblical story, you will remember that in Shiloh, the tabernacle was located before Jerusalem was the capital of Israel. So, Shiloh became the first religious center for the Hebrews in the land of Israel and it became a very important place. You remember the story of Samuel and Eli, the high priest. This is all happening in Shiloh. If you're interested, I have a video on this channel where I visit the ancient Shiloh and talk about its history, its significance. So if you want to check that out, I will leave a link in the description of this episode. So, to answer the question why the Temple Institute chose this location to bring the red heifers, it's very simple. This is where the tabernacle stood and this is where they can prepare, they can work on everything that is needed to building the third temple. So, not only the red heifers are here, but a lot of studies are done here in this place, which became like a laboratory for preparing for the third temple. So, for example, in this place, they have researched the crimson dye that is essential in the red heifer sacrifice. For many years, uh, they didn't know how this red color was achieved, but recently they found a worm from which it can be extracted, this red, really crimson color. So, it's an amazing discovery that is another step towards the process of doing the red heifer sacrifice. So, perhaps even before the temple can be built in Jerusalem, they will be able to build the tabernacle in Shiloh, because it's much easier to actually construct a real tabernacle than the temple. And as you remember, the tabernacle served the same purpose as the temple. Okay, but let's go back to the conference and what was it about. So, the conference was really laid back. It was mainly for Hebrew-speaking, very religious people that are strongly connected to the land. So, you had uh, a lot of rabbinical teaching on the connection between the people of Israel and the land and the importance of the temple and the priests and importance of the return to the holy service of the nation of Israel. So, as to the cows, uh, you can see the three red heifers that still qualify to become the red heifer from which the ashes can be extracted for this very important ceremony of purification. All the three red heifers are of age now, so they are in their third year. So that means they, uh, they qualify already to be sacrificed. And during the conference, we had, for example, this person who was explaining all the details that go into breeding cows in Israel. So he was, for example, explaining the differences of breeding cows in the Golan Heights and in Samaria, so those kind of things. So, all the lectures in Shiloh were explaining that all they do is preparation where they can finally go from theory to practice and they can physically try all the things that are needed to 
uh, prepare for building the real temple and the real uh, religious system and that existed in the Bible. Now, uh, there was also a lecture on the place where the red heifer could be sacrificed on the Mount of Olives. And I did talk about this in my last video when I discussed that Hamas announced that the reason they attacked Israel was because of the red cows and the fact that Israel wants to perform a sacrifice to start building the third temple. Now, since the announcement by Hamas, it really stirred a lot of things in Israel. There was a lot of debate and things were happening and a lot of controversies. People were starting to seek different information. Some were false. And really, really, it got really loud about this particular topic. And when it was quite quiet about this, it was looking uh, possible that the sacrifice of the red heifer could happen for example, during this year's Passover on the Mount of Olives. And the Israeli government was even giving a green light for this procedure to happen. But now, because of all the attention around it, uh, the Israeli government said that it will definitely not happen during this year's Passover. And, you know, Passover is not like it's a deadline that it had to happen on Passover. Actually, the, the cows um, are of age now and they can be sacrificed um, whenever. There isn't really a limit, so it can happen uh, later than Passover, as long as they are of the right age. Anyways, to summarize, it looks like everything is getting closer and closer to this moment when the sacrifice will finally happen. All the pieces are starting to fit in. And, you know, there may be a setback now because it will probably not happen during Passover, but we are still much, much closer than we were, let's say, a year ago. So we'll have to keep an eye on this and see what's actually going to happen. My prediction is that Perhaps, perhaps they will not sacrifice the red heifer in Jerusalem, but they will do it actually in Shiloh. But we'll see. So thank you so much for your attention. I hope this was helpful. Uh, you know, some of you don't know Hebrew, so it would be difficult for you to understand what was said during the conference. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you think that my work is good, you can support me, support the channel. The best way to do it is through Patreon. I will leave a link in the description of this episode for you to find out exactly how you can support me through Patreon. So thank you so much for everybody who's already supporting me. This is a great help for me and I can provide this kind of materials to you um, uh, quite often. So I wish you all the best. Have a great day. Shalom.